We are now ready to talk about more general in-plane shear loading of bolt patterns. And I'm going to go ahead and consider the general case of random bolt patterns with different bolt diameters. But we'll start with what we had already talked about before, and that is a plate. I'm going to label these bolts 1, 2, 3, and 4. If we expose that to a centrally loaded force, then we just have shear loading of each of these bolts. We have simple direct shear, and the shear in each bolt would be the force in each bolt where I'm equally sharing them. In this case, I'm saying I have four bolts, so I can very easily divide that force by four and divide it by pi d squared over four, and that would give me a direct shear loading of each of those bolts. Equal load sharing, easy to do. Well, what if we change the loading to a slightly more complicated load? Well, clearly the direct shear in each of these bolts, I could divide fx by four and fy by four. So I would have components on each of these bolts, fx divided by four and fy divided by four. But the other thing that happens is if I apply a load out here, I end up with a moment being generated. And if I have a moment generated, I have to figure out how I'm going to calculate the shear forces that those bolts are experiencing because of that moment. So the first thing that I have to do is I have to find the centroid. And what centroid? I find the centroid of the bolt pattern. Then I take the force and I'm going to transfer that force to the centroid. And then you know that that force is also going to be generating some moment about the centroid. And that moment about the centroid is going to be an R cross F term, where R is going to be the vector that goes from the centroid out to the applied force. So I have to find the centroid. I have to find the moment. So I find the centroid of the bolt pattern right in here. I have an Fx and an Fy, and I have a moment. And the moment is always going to be a Z-directed or a K-directed moment. And I label that coordinate system as XY. So all my forces are in the XY plane, and then my moment will always be either positive or negative Z-directed moment. So it's either going to be a positive or a negative Z-directed moment that depends on R cross F. So our job here is to figure out how to do all of this. And so what we first must do is find the net force acting on each bolt. If these bolts are all of the same diameter, then the centroid would be at the geometric center, and each of these bolts would be located a distance R from the center. Shear that is generated by the moment, if the moment is in this direction, then I'm going to be applying forces due to the moment that look like this. If I had a counterclockwise moment, I would have shear forces that were generated by that moment. So we know that we have to find the centroid of the bolt pattern, and we have to take the moment of the applied force about the centroid of that bolt pattern. So I need an R cross F, and we notice that our force components are Fx and Fy. So our R cross F is going to be an Rx Fy in the k direction, and we have j cross i is minus k, we have minus ry fx in the k direction, and j cross j is zero. So you'll notice we just get a k component for in-plane loading, where the plane is the xy plane. And if we assign simple positive values to these fx and fy, the sign of the moment will just drop right out of the equation. So we don't have to get, we don't have to play games with what's the sign of the moment. And we know that a positive K directed moment is going to be counterclockwise. And then what we have to do is from that moment, figure out what all the shear forces are. So if we had bolts that were of equal diameter as shown here, we know that that moment applies force to each of the bolts, and that force that it applies is going to be perpendicular to 
the moment arm. And so we just need to find what the V is at each of the bolts. Well, it turns out that the V at each of the bolts, so VI is going to be equal to the magnitude of the moment. And the magnitude of the moment is just the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So VI is gonna be the magnitude of the moment times RI, where RI is the distance from the centroid to the particular bolt labeled I, we multiply that by the cross-sectional area of the bolt and divide that by the polar moment of inertia, where the polar moment of inertia J is just equal to the sum over I of the second moment of the area of those bolts. So that's how we find the magnitude of the force V that is acting at each of the bolts. And that is a very general formula. Our R's can be all over the place. Our areas can be different. We just need to calculate what the force will be at each bolt. And then once we have those forces, so each bolt is going to have a vector component. It's going to have Vx in the I direction and a Vyi in the J direction. And so we can then take the direct shear. So this is the moment-induced shear. And then we have the direct shear force, which is just going to be equal to, at any given bolt, it's going to be Fx over the number of bolts in the I direction, and Fy over the number of bolts in the J direction. And we simply add those components up to get the overall net force on each bolt. It's just going to be given by Fx over N plus the moment induced force. We're going to square that. We're going to add F y over n plus the moment induced force at each bolt. We take the square root of it and it gives us the net force at each bolt. And all we have to do is figure out a methodology, a general methodology for doing all of this stuff. If we have a more complicated bolt pattern, as is shown in this particular figure where I have four bolts, all of which are different diameters and all of which are at some odd location in the plate, and I apply a low somewhere along the plate, the first thing I have to do is find the centroid of the bolt pattern. I, I still equally divide the direct shear forces, but I identify a vector component for the force. I find the centroid of the bolt pattern. I locate the vector location of each of the bolts from the centroid, R1 through R4. I take a moment about the centroid by locating a vector from the centroid to the force F, so RCF. So my moment about the centroid is RCF crossed into F. And then I just have to do a little bit of bookkeeping. So the things that we must do are, we must find the centroid. We must find the polar moment of inertia of all the bolts about the centroid. We have have to find the moment of the force about the centroid. We assume equal shear load sharing for the direct shear, and then we use our equation for calculating the moment-induced shear to find the extra component of force that's brought about by the moment. So what I do is simple. I coordinatize the plate. I put my origin at the lower left-hand corner, and for each of the bolts, I identify the location, x1, y1. I write down the diameters of each of the bolts. I calculate the cross-sectional area of each of the bolts. I take the first moment by multiplying x times a for each of the bolts and y times a for each of the bolts. I also find the relative positions of each of the bolts, x, i, and I subtract the centroid from it. I take yi and subtract the y component of the centroid from it. How do I get the centroid? Well, the x and y components of the centroid are just the sum of the first moments of area divided by the total area of the bolts. Same for y, sum of the first moments divided by the total area. Then I have to identify this R from the centroid to the force. I then calculate the moment that's generated by that. 
And then I calculate the shear that is induced by the moment at each of the bolts by taking the magnitude of the moment, multiplying that by the distance from the centroid to the center of that particular bolt, multiply that by the area of the bolt, divide by the polar moment of inertia, and that gives me the moment-induced load on each bolt. Here's an equation for the polar moment of inertia. This is the equation for the direct load on each bolt that's brought about by application of a moment of magnitude m for each bolt i. So we need all the vector components. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to figure out once we have the moment induced shear forces at each of the bolts, how do we convert that into vector components? So we need to know the centroid of the bolt pattern and we need to know these locations r of each of the bolts. So you'll notice that each of the bolts is going to have a component. We've located them relative to some origin. They are x I and yi. We have a centroidal location, which is x bar, y bar. And so each of the r's is going to have an xi minus x bar, a yi minus y bar. And so that gives us the coordinates of each of the bolts relative to the centroid. Once we have those coordinates and we know the sign of the moment, then we can convert that into components for each of the forces. So let us imagine that we had a negative moment that was rotating now clockwise. You know that that would be generating shear forces where the shear at each of the bolts is perpendicular to the radius that locates each of the bolts. We can very easily determine the magnitude of each of those using our simple relationship that we've identified before. And you'll notice that if we attach an XY coordinate system to the centroid for a negative directed moment, when we are above the x-axis, these forces induced by the shear are going to have positive x components. If we're below the axis, these forces will have negative x components. So if we're below the x-axis, we will have negative x components for a clockwise moment. Notice also that if we are to the right of the y-axis for a negative directed moment, that our y components induced by the moment at each bolt will be negative. If we are to the left of the y-axis for this clockwise moment, our y components will be directed upward. Once we have this force magnitude at each of the bolts, we need to find a way to determine the components x and y, and then we can use our notion of above and below to the right or to the left of the axes to determine which direction those things point. Let's go look carefully at this bolt two where we have moment induced force directed downward and to the right. We have an angle theta so we can find that angle if we want. That angle here is theta. This angle is theta. This is 90 minus theta so this angle up here is theta. The x component of this force at i is going to be equal to the v moment at i times the sine of the angle theta and the y component is going to be equal to the magnitude of the vector times the cosine of theta and then in this case we will apply the convention where if it's a clockwise moment and we are above the x-axis this will be positive and the y directed component will be negative it's easy for us to figure out what the sines and cosines are sine theta is just going to be y i minus y bar over r i and cosine theta x i minus x bar over r i. So we have everything we need to solve for all of the components. This is an example of a spreadsheet that I built to be able to handle four bolts at any location and of any diameter for a plate that would be generally loaded at one end of the plate. So the figure down here is the example that I will present where I have three bolts, bolt one, two, and three. Bolt one is located 15 millimeters from the lower left side, which is where I always place my origin, and 15 millimeters up. Bolt two is 35 millimeters over and 30 millimeters up. Bolt three is 15 millimeters over and 45 millimeters up. You will see that I have these bolts labeled up here in the bolt locations 1, 2, and 3. 
bolt 1, 15, 15, bolt 2, 35, 30, and bolt 3, 15, 45. In this particular example, bolts 1 and 2 have diameters of 10 millimeters, while bolt 3 has a diameter of 12 millimeters. And so I include the diameters of these bolts here, 10, 10, and 12. And then I have a little uh, drop down where I say whether or not I actually do have a bolt there. Now I built this to be able to handle up to four bolts. You can build any number of bolts you want in there. And so I just put a yes or a no depending upon whether or not I have four bolts. In this case I have three, so I have three yeses. Given these bolt diameters, I also calculate the bolt areas. I then also must locate the forces that I have acting on this plate, and I have tied the forces to the upper right corner of the plate. A thousand newtons in the x direction, a two thousand newtons in the y direction, and I have placeholders for the x and y components of that externally applied force. The magnitude, 1,000 and 2,000, and the location, well, I'm 250 plus another 50 millimeters off in the x direction, puts me at 300 millimeters, and I'm up 60 millimeters. Remember, my origin is at the lower left-hand corner of this plate. So the 1,000-pound load is at 360. The 2,000-pound y-directed load is at 360, and the net resultant force is as shown here. I then calculate the moment after I find the centroid of the three bolts. But when I take that moment, in this case, remember, we have plane loading. The forces are X and Y components. So the moment is going to be about the z-axis, and I calculate that moment. The other thing that I do is I locate the centroid of the bolt pattern using the method that I described earlier. I take the x and y components of the forces, and I divide those forces by the number of bolts so that I am equally sharing the direct shear loads that I'm applying in the x and y direction. So this Vx would be one-third of a thousand, the Vy would be one-third of two thousand, and I apply those shear components to each and every one of the bolts. The next thing I do is I, of course, locate the bolts in the x and y directions from the centroid, and I have already calculated the centroid. Then I calculate the shear moment components, the magnitude of the shear moment components that must be acting perpendicular to the radius that extends from the centroid out to the center of the bolt. I then, put, I then convert each of those into component vectors in the x and y directions for bolts one, bolts two, and bolts three, and then I take and add the x components and y components on each bolt, take the square root of the sum of the squares to get the net shear that's acting on each bolt. Those are these three components right here. Once I have those net shears, I can then find the bearing stress on the bolt, the shear stress that's acting at the interface between the two clamped plates, and the bearing stress in the plate. These are factors of safety that I'm using because I am going to calculate the net bearing stresses, the net shearing stresses, and I am going to divide the yield strengths of the plate and the bolt by those net components to come up with factors of safety. Clearly, the best way to do all of this is to do it in a spreadsheet.